You may ask why is it important? This happened and it's all over and finished. Simple thing. Yesterday, was it yesterday or day before? Yeah, two days back. Two days back. When we gave this talk at Xavier Institute, there were quite a few gentlemen who came up with, uh, I mean, with a little different background. And they came up with some specific objective, objectives. So you can understand what's going on. I don't want to mention further than that, but that is why you need to know. You are the people here. I'm not here. I go back. But if you want to defend and uh, something which you inherited from your parents, grandparents and your... This is the time to do it. To give a little background, because I, I don't... I, I'll make it a little free-flowing and as the thoughts go, and it's not a formal thing because that formal thing happened the other day. Uh, and a lot of the statistics and other things you can find in the book. If you, you can either beg or borrow or steal a book or you can buy it. The full the summary is on the net also. Yeah. There are and uh, this summary. information is free. I'm happy to, my purpose is to disseminate this information so that we have knowledge of it and not be, and for many Catholics, people are afraid and ashamed to talk of it. We don't need to be. Because this was a Portuguese institution. It was not a Catholic as such. It was a political institution primarily. It was sent by the Portuguese king to establish a social order to act as a guardian of uh, orth uh, orthodoxy, uh, religious orthodoxy, keep the new converts within a certain thing and to defend them from outside influences. Uh, so, it, it was not bigoted. It, more than anything else, it was a highly judicial organization. There were laws or, or, or booklets that were rules for, for this organization, which is called the... You, you want to switch up some... We'll make the topic a little hotter. This, this fellow is making a lot of noise. So, you know, the, that there is importance to know what is going on. Yeah. As loud as I can, sir, without Fanny, I can't speak louder. Remember <laughs> Fanny? I'll, I'll try. If, if, yeah. You see, I, I'll try and make it light, you know. Well, let's not get too serious because there are a lot of other things you can... So primarily it was a judicial organization and it judged people. There were three courts. It was one of the courts. You had the civil court, the relation. Uh, you had the ecclesiastical court, which, which dealt with church matters. And this uh, inquisition had the job of also social disciplining. You are new converts now. And this conversion was not just in terms of religion. It was in terms of creating a new sort of subject population of a widely dispersed population from Brazil, Europe, Africa, Macau, India of course, Macau and everywhere else and give them one sort of identity. Except it could not be a genetic identity because we are all different genetic backgrounds. But they tried to. That is why we had to adopt shirts and pants. That is why we had to go to church on Sundays and we had to do certain things. Uh, we gave up uh, take up new foods and other things. So when somebody talks about conversion, which is not specifically in the book, but just to as a diversion, I, I respond, it is not conversion per se, it is conversion of a certain degree. Now the people who are sitting in uh, other places, they all wear pants and shirts which are European. And for us in Goa, it is one of the first people to start taking these things. You know. Uh, it, it, you are eating so much of Portuguese food, I mean, food that the Portuguese brought here, potatoes, pao bhaji, uh, chilies, other things. The only thing that we Catholics have done is gone one step further and converted. Or our ancestors have done it. So it's, it's not just conversion that makes you different, it's the degree of conversion. And that doesn't make you different, it's just that. Now, if, if you look at this book, primarily, it is, as I said, it was something which the king put to unify this. 
Now the reason why he sent this inquisition here was not to persecute anybody. It was not to uh, create terror and other things which happens. Terror will happen if, if there are courts. When you are driving without a helmet on the road, you are a little bit afraid of the police, right? I am putting it in, in a very simple way. So when you step a little bit this way or that way, uh, there is a little de degree. If, if a policeman comes and knocks at your door, you will say, oh my God, what have I done? So it's something like that. Of course, it's a I am making it a little bit, uh, look a little bit uh, simple. It, it could be to a little more further degree. But when you read the judgments and the reasons, and I have analyzed more than 8,000 of these names and this one, and those names I've compiled on Excel sheets, complete details, offenses, uh, where they came from and uh, what were the punishments meted out, you get a very different story. For instance, uh, these trials were conducted in great secrecy. You are not, if anybody who was uh, in a trial and revealed his, the secrets of what happened there, he had to sign a vow before release saying that he would not reveal and if it was denounced for having revealed it, come back. Why did you do this? Now you take a bigger punishment. Go to Anjay Deva, five years. Something like that. Okay? So it was kept secret. But the demonstration of this inquiry was done in great publicity. It was called a celebration. And that is the out of the fair. The out of the fair, many people mistake it as trial by fire. Nothing. There's total misreading and mis uh, misrepresented there. It is called an act of faith. Why is it an act of faith? Because at that uh, ceremony, it was done in public in most cases, it was also done in private in certain cases. The person who had committed the offence, I don't use words like criminal and other things because I don't, I don't, today we just don't look at this as anything to do with criminality. Uh, he had abjured his offence. And this was a place where reconciliation took place. And you did it in public. You signed it in different degrees. You had different degrees of abjurations. One of the formats is in the book. You know, the original thing. And I have given a translation as well. So, you publicly said, I will not do this again. And uh, I will be a good boy from now on. A good lady from now on. And uh, they said, okay, here it is. You abjure. And you signed. You, now, most of these things you find, are uh, abjurations for different formats of heresy because the Inquisition derived its authority to judge on heresy not from the king but from the Pope but all inquisitors were appointed by the king so the king's political agents but the authority to judge came from the Pope from the bull of uh, one of the popes But all the cases which were done, reports went back only to Lisbon, nowhere else. And these documents, uh, every year they were sent back to a certain degree because it's very expensive to send things back. Uh, and, and everything was handwritten. And you find, you know, in these documents, I, I would encourage you to have a look at this website, the Akaiwa uh, Tore uh, which, Tome, which has a lot of lists. And you can go through these, the old Portuguese handwriting, and you can just imagine the guy sitting up there in that room. All these documents were kept in a secret room called the Secreto. They had totally locked windows and doors and only three keys. Two were with the two inquisitors and one was with the promoter. The promoter was the prosecuting lawyer. So they were kept in high, this one, and heresy was treated as treason. It comes from Roman law. Roman law treated heresy as treason. This comes from the Byzantine Emperor Justinian's uh, definition, which goes back to the 4th century. So I have traced all that down in this book in a very simple format, so you get a, a good idea of what happens. In the book, I also bring it down to a place where you, some of you uh, can uh, uh, relate to. For instance, in the same village of Saligaon, I think it is 1650, if I have a look it will refresh my memory. Two gentlemen, a father and son, the father was 80 years old and the son was, uh, I, 
I think 30 or 40 or 40 or 50 like that. They appeared before the Inquisition. The father died before the, this thing was done, so he was uh, absolved. Uh, they had gone back to Gentile Dad. Gentile Dad is anything to do with the Gentile religion. Like for instance, sacrificing a cock or, or going to the temple or having a small idol in your house, all these were frowned upon. The Inquisition didn't have a police force to go around and check what are you doing, what are you doing, no. It relied on what was a Roman style of this one. In the Roman law, there were two types of uh, uh, cases which were taken up. One was accused, accused you or something. Accusatory. So if somebody accused you before the judge, then they were called up. But if his accusation proved <coughs> wrong, then he was punished. So the other one was denunciation. In denunciation, you just went and said, Tomaka Yekala, or that fellow is doing something like this. Okay. You are a witness? Fine. What is your relationship? Have you had a fight with him? Did you advise him? First, are you a reliable witness? If you have proved that you have given false testimony, the case was dropped and the false testimony, the person who gave the testimony was punished. So you know the laws and rules, how it worked. And they are very well set down. And the punishment for false testimony was much more severe than anything else, uh, than this. If the testimony held, the witness was arrested, put in this thing and an investigation took place. And it went on a certain ways of trials. Now many of the cases in the first 60 years relate to Judaism and Islamism. So that tells you very clearly why the inquisitors were sent here. It was to suppress the new Christians, that means those, not, not converts, new Christians, uh, Christos Novos, refers to Jews and Muslims who had been converted in Portugal or their descendants and come. Okay? And uh, they were, uh, there was a strong social rivalry between the old Christians and these because these were denied a lot of, uh, somewhat similar to what happened here in Goa uh, with the, I'll say gentios because the word Hindu was not yet uh, had not yet been used in use at that time. So, like Brahmins and others who didn't convert, uh, they were denied posts and government posts and other things. So, they went into commerce. And with this network, they developed a very, very thriving overseas uh, commercial network. And when they came to Goa, they brought it with them. Now, that created rivalry. It also created a lot of unrest in the Portuguese court because you know, uh, a lot of the trade went via the Ottoman Empire uh, to Europe. These are the real reasons. So the king and, and the advisors said, said that we have to take them out of the trading network and we have to take over this trade to protect our interests. What was this trade? It was not pepper. Pepper was a monopoly of the king. It was gems, cloth and many other things. Gems are very easy to take and very high value. You can put uh, two million dollar worth of gems in my pocket or in my underwear and go along okay so these were the things and gems came from all this east from burma from sri lanka from uh, golconda and they were taken by along these routes uh, via these routes to amsterdam uh, and that is where the uh, flourishing trade took place because the new christo christos novos and the jews went to amsterdam there was freedom there so that is why the trading interest was yeah, 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 because they were rivals. So basically, they, they were sent. One purpose was this, which you can see from the statistics. Okay, you see the other side of the statistics is the Islamism. I think about uh, 20, twenty-seven percent of the cases were related to Islam, and about eighteen percent to Judaism. Uh, and they suffered the highest death penalties. Anybody convicted of Judaism there was a very good chance that you would end up on the compost or Lazaro with the bird. It is only after that, and, and you notice something, whenever there is a military threat to Goa or the Estado of India, that is when the Inquisition's activities increase. Like from 1600 onwards, it shifts towards gently that. Because by then, the convert population has increased, and then you have the Dutch coming in. The first Dutch threat comes in. 
then by 1650 and such, uh, that threat becomes high. It goes still higher. Then it subsides for a little while, still about 1675. I mean, and then the Maratha threat comes in. Again, it comes up, and the Maratha threat, the the focus shifts towards Bardes. That is where you find the Kolwal TV defense line built, Chapora Fort coming up, and that, and that is why quite a few people from TV because of the economic distress that all these things, because when, when a fort is built, the local Gaunkari had to pay 50% of the cost. It's a huge cost. They took conscripts to defend the line. They took conscripts to build the lines. Who will look after your lands? Who is going to plough the fields? See, these are natural causes. This is not persecution. This is not this thing. These are developments of what happens. So, and it came to a stage where Bhattas uh, uh, could not produce food for four months in a year. So how do you live? And then the Marathas start coming in and they burn up the crops, they take these things. What happens? People migrate. This was at the time of 1730, Before that. It starts... It, it, no, it, it, starts, it starts before that. From about 16... Uh, 1667 was Shivaji's first, this one, where he was uh, chasing the Desais. And then 1683 is when his son Sambhaji uh, captured Zue Island or was prepared to cross over. The next day they would have crossed over into Old Goa. Uh, after that it subsides somewhat but doesn't end. Then from 1700 onwards, the Peshwa takes charge. And that is when an aggressive tone takes place. And it builds up for the next 40 years when the province of the north goes yeah. and Margaon also is captured and all and these sort of things. Because the Marathas are expanding northward. Yes. The, 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 the Marathas were getting out of Marathwada, the, uh, this thing, into the Konkan baseline and getting all these rich provinces to catch hold of something with the trade and other things. Uh, and the Portuguese played a very subtle diplomatic game in which between the Mughals, Marathas and they, and playing each other sort of. So, one of these reasons why Goa was saved in 1683 is exactly because when Sambhaji was about to cross over, the Mughal army came from the back. So, overnight the Marathas uh, disappeared. Okay. Okay. So, these are some of the reasons uh, when, when you start putting the... the Mughal army sent the Aurangzeb. Not Aurangzeb, it was Aurangzeb's, uh, I think his son was in charge or something. 1663 was he? No, 1683. Aurangzeb was in the 70s. Yeah, yeah, but, but his son, his son, he was already in power. Aurangzeb? No, he died in 1707. 1707 he died, but he lived for many years. So he, he took over from Pishwaj Army. Aurangzeb's army. Aurangzeb's son was in charge of this army. Ah, his son was in charge. Yeah, but Aurangzeb was the emperor. And this is the same son who revolted and went by uh, Goa and escaped to uh, Persia at that time. Why His name was also Akbar. Yeah. 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 Why Goa said that he got a, he would get a ship to go. He would get a ship. Yes. It was yes. an international port. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Goa was a, a, the central thing for the horse trade, which fed Vijayanagar and fed the, these other things. So it was a very vital area. So there were a lot of... Uh, when you see all these things, you, uh, these things are not mentioned in the English you see in archives as such, the Maratha invasion and other things, except for one or two things. But you get a lot of it when you start uh, reading Pisulankar, for instance, the Ashantos and uh, also the Agentes, the diplomats, a lot of mention of these people. Uh, I'll get into a slightly different thing. Uh, when you come to regional things, for instance, when we talk about regional things, from 1700 onwards, the focus shifts to the north. It is not here in Goa. And what they do is a new Class of people. Provinces of the north. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Bombay, yeah, Basin. Bombay, Basin, Basin, all these places. Most of the cases relate to that. And most of these cases, about 70% of these cases, come from the underprivileged classes. You'll get coolies, you'll get uh, cobblers, you'll get uh, fishermen, all these sort of things. So these are the people who had uh, mostly going into worshipping, sacrificing, and other things. So they were called. Uh, investigated and put back. But one interesting observation which you can just observe when you put these uh, uh, incursions, Maratha incursions and these inquisition uh, statistics is from Aldona. 
Anybody from Maldonado? She's yeah. from next door. Mm. Yeah, oh. Nachinola, two, two gentlemen, one... Uh, uh, yeah. He and his wife were burnt, and his wife remained because her name was Rukmini. And, and it's mentioned that she did not die in the faith. That was around, uh, I forget now, 1690 or something like that. Uh, but in Aldona, from, from about 1701 to 1712, practically 50% of the cases come in that period. And that is the time when the Bosle was attacking Aldona. It was attacking from that side. So it was warfare. And that, that shows the Inquisition being active there means that they were trying to contain uh, uh, desertions and other things. Because it is the frontier zone at that time. Although now it is at the frontier. Uh, when you look at this in that way, you see things in a different light. Uh, and, uh, anybody likes to know a little bit of the where the Inquisition Palace was? The Sabayo Palace? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like to know that during the Inquisition, there were informers all over, all over the place. Like informers and witnesses. And their identity was kept, kept completely secret, even from the victim. So these informers got incentive for reporting against them and they used what brothers incentive? against brothers, what, father what, against what, son, what neighbor against neighbor. What, what incentive? What? what incentive? Monetary incentives and people mm. say that even if his property provides there, there an auction no? and half of the money will go to the informers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that is all hearsay. Okay. No, I don't I want to know that you have gone through the reports. On is there any information that the, what are the things about info, identity of the informants and what are they? And people who are actually in, uh, living in a I mean, state of fear because who is informer? Your neighbor is informer or no? You do not know. That is right. That, that is why the Inquisition first questioned them and tried to ascertain the, whether this man was informing because of some rivalry and other things or whether it was a genuine case. And if he was informing with a false motive or a different personal motive, he was punished more severely than the other person. And the other person was let off. Uh, you are right in one sense, uh, they, they never got money as such, okay? That was not the motive. Uh, because as far as the Inquisition records show and the accounting shows, it is not. Now, when a person was convicted of heresy, his property also went. So even if he was burnt afterwards, the property was confiscated but not to the Inquisition. The property and other things went to the Treasury. The Treasury was separate. It was a state, uh, this one. Okay? So the Treasury got the, pro the uh, assets and they were auctioned there in the Lelo. That's on the Ruwa uh, Direta, just when you go to the Se Cathedral. So partly this thing, but th these particular documents, you know, a lot of them are in Portuguese. And uh, I am not a scholar in Portuguese, so I have, I have taken a lot of trouble to this one. And a lot of the vocabulary repeats, so you don't have to make a lot of the same. So how did you do your research at Torbu without Portuguese? He picked up a lot of Portuguese on the way. With a lot of difficulty. Uh, may I ask a question? Yeah, please, please. Yeah. So when you think but Professor you Fleur is from, from Bombay oh. and she oh. actually has taught at St. Xavier's yeah. and so Did you do that Dr. webinar on uh, uh, Roshan's uh, pilgrim's case? On, on, yes, uh, yes, yes. Oh, so, sorry, I didn't recognize you, you please. Heard, I, I, heard, I think. COVID times. Yes. Okay. That was on Chaul? Uh, no, I did this on Christianity in Bombay. In Bombay, okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah I I'm sorry, I didn't recognize you before. We're talking about the uh, pilgrim, uh, pilgrim Yeah, pilgrim stays. Yes, yes pilgrim stays, yes. yes. Okay, uh, your yeah, question. No, I, my question is uh, following his question of the informers. I would imagine that uh, even a slight, you know, uh, going over to, like, like they say in Kashmiri, but then the other day somebody asked you about uh, that that question. But uh, since most people are from Goa and about Goa, I don't want to say anything there. You can just pass but it around. Kashmiri, but then it's about Kashmiri uh, of the North. Yeah. Not the ah, ah, ah. So there you see, even if somebody was found with a BT nut in his house, yeah. So I would imagine that there were many people who would have taken the chance to spy or uh, get rid of personal 
spite, spite. Fights or yeah. Yes. And take this way out. You know? Yes. Uh, find the smallest and the slightest little uh, deviation. Yeah. As you said, if somebody found a bikini nut in the house and so, or the baby leaf for the little safari, and you know how many. Mm. I mean, when I think of some of the customs that uh, people have between marriages, the roast and all that kind of thing today, uh, that would surely have been attracted. Uh, attracted. Attracted uh, the uh, the inquisitions. Uh, De definitely, did. Yeah. You see, it's a very simple thing uh, regarding this uh, uh, de denunciations. The inquisitors used to uh, go around to different areas because you can see that clearly from uh, when, when they made an inventory in the notebook, in, in the Kaderno they call it a notebook, it is listed in this year this inquisitor went to this place and all that. But when you see the Auto Defa list, you will find that certain villages have an overwhelming number for that particular year. That means the inquisitor has visited. Okay? Uh, and in this, this sermon that he preached, was saying this, if any one of you has committed these offences, come forward, you will be treated with leniency. You are called an appresentato. That means you have voluntarily come and confessed. If any of you know that this gentleman or that gentleman has done yeah, something, right. you have a duty to come forward at the peril of your soul. Okay? So people came forward. Some came out of fear, some came out of this one, uh, some came out of that motive of uh, get, getting some, uh, somebody in trouble. It was there. And, uh, and many of these cases were, were like this, you know, like uh, having an idol in the house or somebody uh, uh, attending a function in the night uh, and sacrificing a cock or a, a goat. For instance, the first person in uh, Aldona to be punished was a gentleman called Lorenzo Ferrao. He comes from the fourth one goal. And his name, if you have read Gankar's book, you have, if, I don't know how many people have heard of Gankar's book, he translated a version of the uh, Tombo di Aldona. That is a record of the Gaunkari minutes from 1595 to 1605. And in this, Lorenzo Ferrao's name is appears. He was a Gaunkar who, who represented his one goal in the meeting. Ferrao's are still there in Aldona, no? Yeah. So, so, Lorenzo Ferrao was the first gentleman to be, and that was in. Uh, related to our cardinal. Uh, huh? Related to our cardinal. Maybe related to our cardinal, he says. Could be. <laughs> if, if he came from Madhudona. <laughs> and uh, he was punished for sacrificing a uh, uh, fowl. And. Uh, it should come, it should come. Yeah. Carry on, carry on. What is the maximum sentence for burning at stake? And what sort of uh, heresy affected this burning at the stake? No, can you, before that, could you also make a comment on the number of burnings at stake and what is the significance yeah, of burning I at stake? I would like to know what is it that attracted burning at the, the stake? I'll, I'll the worst punishment. Yeah. No, yeah, no, no, it, it is, it's not just that. You see, the, the Inquisition, apart from heresy, it also uh, investigated bigamy, it investigated sodomy, and it, if you impeded the Inquisition, if you tried to obstruct the Inquisition, all those things were also there involved. Then, if uh, and as far as non-Christians were concerned, uh, they were not. Now, when you say non-Christians, you are talking about Gentiles or non-Christians. No, 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 Christians, 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 Christians,
the numbers that we have, I have compiled, uh, th there was an inventory done in 1774 when the inquisition was first closed. So it took about uh, eight, nine months, they completed it. And in that inventory, they have listed all the names, year-wise, wherever they can, otherwise they are clubbed together. That, those names come up to about 16,000 odd. I have counted them. Trials, not deaths. Trials. Mm -hmm. No. Trials. Yeah, yeah. Trials. Case, case files. Case, case files. Bayao, Antonio Bayao wrote his book in about uh, 1950 or maybe earlier. So his book, he also comes to about 16,000 something. That way. Subsequent to that, uh, but he has not referred to the auto defa files. So auto defa lists are there. So I have made a complete list of whatever is available and put these together and my figure comes to closer to 19,000. Now out of this, many years the auto default lists are not there. So I would say taking an average and other things, the total number that were uh, investigated, right. not all convicted, were about 23,000 or so. Could be plus or minus, it depends. No cases could come. Because some of these auto default lists are, are, are there in a book uh, that was uh, written by Antonio Moriera and this book is available in the Biblioteca Nacional de Portugal in Lisbon. Uh, you can download it if you are interested, it's handwritten. Uh, I'll just talk yeah. to yeah, your, your I, question. I know my question was, no, what, was, was what was the deaths? There is a we checked. Maximum crime, maximum yeah. maximum maximum what, maximum what attracted crime. Uh, the let, me, let me tell you. Burning at the stake. No, burning what at the stake, the out of this number. See, I, 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 I in general, what was it yeah. that made you burn someone at the stake? No, bur burning, see burning was, was a, no, a, a, no, one sec, one sec, there seems to be some confusion here. I, what I want to ask Alan is burning at the stake a more severe form of death or is it a average form of death or what? In English law, any, any traitor, anyone convicted of treason was burned. Wait, 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 wait. They also in Elizabethan law, it came. It is also in Roman law, uh, and and uh, uh, in Elizabethan law they introduce a still further worse punishment of being hung, drawn, and quartered for men, but women were burnt. Yeah, like John of Arc. Yeah. Okay. Now burning, burning was a, uh, this one of, uh, and 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 uh, in, again in English law there were two types of treason. You had the high treason, which was treason against the king and his family. Then you had petty treason. Petty treason was if a housewife uh, murdered a husband or something against the husband. And there is a case in Bombay, 1720, and that is in Foster's uh, factory records, where a woman was burnt for this by the English, not the Portuguese. So burning was not an uncommon. Uh, yes, no, no, so but, many witches yeah, but were how burned. Many, how many? In the, in the Inquisition, how many people were? Hardly, hardly two. That's what shocked me. Hardly two per year were getting burned. No, how many people were burned? Out of. Out of what is a crime? Yeah. What is a crime? I want to know what is the crime. the crime. Crimes are different. For instance, sodomites. Sodomy if, if, if you are serial sodomite, you are burnt. There was a priest, Zwan da Costa, and uh, he, he sodomized a lot of uh, uh, young boys. And uh, his, he was denounced. Yeah. We thought it was something in the 21st yeah, century. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily, they don't do the same punishment. And, yeah. <laughs> he was burnt. And he was burnt probably at the uh, Mandovay gate, you know, uh, if you go outside, just outside there. I showed you What that other gate. crimes were serious enough? Heresy oh. was one, Heresy. a dogmatist. Now it is not the first time you are not said, okay, oh, you committed, go, you'll be burnt. No, you are given a chance. If you are relapsed, you did it again. Dogmatist but, but, meaning? But dogmatist it's important, uh, Alan, to tell us the number. Ah, the number. An idea. Just so tell in us the 252 number. years. Hey, listen to me, Baba. Out of... Uh, I have got the list for about 83 out of the five where you have com complete list. Out of this, the number of persons convicted was about 8,000 and odd. Out of these, 177 were burnt physically. So 177 is the number that you over, have. Over, how many over a period of 200 years. Because I mean that is no, important. The number is more than that. But in absentia, burning is only a sentence. It is not No, no, no you saying maybe you wait, wait, missed out a ah, few documents. Let, let, let me complete. Because there are some years for which we don't have them. Now, in addition to this, there are about another 158 or so, the exact number you will find at the back of the book itself I have given so that it is clear, 
were burnt in what is called M statua or in effigy. In other words, the uh, effigy was carried in the procession and they were burnt. Which we do regularly in, in political rallies yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Yeah. Well, effigy means I, I, cannot I, I, burn him physically because yeah. he has been already killed during torture. Correct. No, no, no. No, no, no. no. He is absconded. Don't say that. He is not that, available. That is where all these myths start. He was not killed in torture. <laughs> Some of them were absent. They had escaped and across the border. You are not called. They were in British India. The word Ojinthis is there. Some have died before they were brought in. Not everybody was tortured. Okay. In, in only you find the number of tortured, the names only in that reportorio which was compiled by the Inquisitor Feguara, which is also available. And if you want to know this, that Excel sheet has also been put up. It is available in the University of Sao Paulo. And that has been done by a gentleman I am in touch with, Bruno Fiedler. Okay. And I am working with him to put these other 8,000 names that I have compiled uh, in the same repository. So it will be available to you after some time. What I will do is I will uh, 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 summarize it and try and make it so that people can understand it better. Some questions, some questions, some, some questions. Sonia, Sonia, Sonia. No, her heresy was the primary one. Heresy is what? Heresy means no, wrong context, faith, wrong faith, context. wrong beliefs, wrong. No, no, being, being a Christian, context, being a Christian, context. you deny Christian beliefs. No, in this heresy. context, what is heresy? For instance, if you promote uh, uh, another sect, for instance, if you start questioning the authority of the uh, or, or the so uh, the thing of the Trinity, Protestant, Protestant, Protestantism for, for Christians. For Christians. For Christians. So, so let me get this straight after this. 60 years of listening to this, I want to know, no Hindus were burnt? I have not found any record. You didn't find But so in your, this, no Hindus were burnt. See, actually what wait, is wait, important, just, what wait, is wait, important wait, wait, to understand. Wait, wait. No See, Hindus yeah. were burnt? No. Gentios. So, Gentios yeah, yeah, were not yeah. burnt. So there was no crimes com committed against the Gentios. No, no, not they. they, 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 they let me listen. 25% yeah. 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 of the names I've got come from Gentios, but they were not burnt. No torture was carried out. That's that is not mentioned about yeah, torture. No torture, no, no mouth, mouth trap. No no nothing was done. They were punished in some cases. I'll tell you. Sometimes fines. Many of them were whipped. The word aushutos is used. Whipped. And I find that more gentios were whipped than Christians. Because it was a public humiliation. And that is what that post that is up there. It's not a hat kangro. It was a whipping post. You are tied like this and you are whipped. Or some were whipped, uh, being taken along the public roads. Then there were fines. Then there was exile. You were sent to Anjidiva. Or if you are from Salset, you were sent to Bardes. Or you were sent to some other place. Some were sent to Brazil. For instance, in 1699, uh, about 48, uh, 49 uh, uh, people from Zue Island, that auto de fe relates only to these people. There were five gentios who had lands across the border and there there's a Portuguese guy who recruited these people and took them across the lands to cultivate those lands. That was punishable. If you went across the border and cultivated the lands, you are punished. And uh, uh, out of these, the two prime gentios were sent to Brazil for ten, one was sent for 10 years, which is a high number because I have never seen anybody being sent for 10 years. So he was particularly, and uh, there were these, uh, I think, but no, you were sent to Brazil imprisonment. No, in just exile, just exile, exile. 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 Not to return, not to return. Across the Kalapan. Have a very nice Kalapan. time in Brazil. Yeah, but he can't return, no? <laughs> 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 uh, it's not today's Rio de Janeiro, my friend. You have to go not and some by no, no, no carnival. Like like no carnival no, no, Australia. Like <laughs> he, he may have been also made to work for his living in the case. Sorry. What do you mean by inclusion? In the sense, no, you use the word social discipline. You said that if I've been a bad boy, I mean, you started your talk with the phrase bad boy. It's a little flippant, but let's. I mean, you're definitely sobering down the nature, the intensity of the inclusion. I also seem to notice that all your uh, bibliography is foreign source. You use not one single vernacular source. Do you think that is a possible reason for why your uh, Mr. Mashaj's inquisition is so sober, so a rap on the knuckles? Have is your choice of bibliography, you have 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 is your choice of research, the material access, no vernacular sources, 
Do you think that gives your imposition the tone it does? Do you have any vernacular sources? No, can, you, no, can, you point out, can you point out any vernacular source in the English? I'm telling you, do not have a vernacular source. There aren't I mean, does that affect? I mean, no, is that? So of course, it, it will yeah, affect in a way because you're getting, see, you're getting one view. Sulenka did not use vernacular so sources. He used only Delon. No, no, no. Add one. You're talking about Creole curry. This is not repair. Creole curry. Even Creole curry did not use vernacular. All on one at a time. Just, just for law and order. One at a time. Okay. Everyone will get a chance. Everyone will get a chance. One at a time. Let him finish. Let him finish. Mr. Mr. Creole curry. Shh. You have studied Mr. Creole curry's books on the grounds that the law is not true. Was based in the Spanish and the Portuguese Inquisition, and a lot of it is secondary history. All I'm asking is, would you have possibly arrived at a different conclusion if there was? Now, since I've been enlightened, that there is no vernacular material. Do you think you would have? There is no vernacular, uh, like in, in this kind of thing. Please, the there is. The Sastri Shabakar is a vernacular. But that is the Sastri of the North. Is that is the Sastri. Yeah, yeah. so let me be informed. Let's confine ourselves here. Let's confine ourselves to the imposition of the, 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 the South. If there was vernacular material, do you think you would have arrived at a slightly different conclusion as to the nature? Maybe this imposition would have been such. Wouldn't have been a rap on the knuckles of a schoolboy. Wouldn't have been a bad boy being. Made to stand with his hands up. Would it have been slightly different if there was? Quite, a quite possibly, quite possibly, because I have gone on evidence and then formed a conclusion. I have not started with a conclusion and then tried to find evidence and say, oh, this doesn't suit it. Put it under the table. No. If you if you look at that, there is one native source there. Uh, in this, that is Gankar's book, but that is on the Gaunkaris. And not really connected. no, it, there is a connection, because when you look at the repertorio for Aldona. You find many of those names are there, uh, or not many, but quite a few of them are there. So then you start connecting. Then, for somebody who is interested in Christianization of Aldona, can start linking up. So that means the new converts did not give up the old habits. For instance, Lorenzo Ferrao was convicted twice. First was in, uh, uh, I mean, you you can if if you get the book and if you read those things, you'll get it. Okay. But the second time is a relapse. And he was given a more serious uh, punishment as a second time. If he had done the same thing third time, he may have ended up. No, but when you say about local sources, no, it doesn't mean somebody like there are various communication. Let's see the communication of the monks and all in Goa writing to the king of Portugal. Look, writing to the king of Portugal. Those are that is also a source of communication. Of course, okay? of course. A lot of written so this all those Mossoy libros, the Mossoy. Guys, talk a lot about communication, and there, if you really had to start, I'm not saying you did that. If it probably there would be sources. One sec. See, I think our understanding is also getting caught up with a lot of nationalistic zeal, where we see things in terms of local and national and no local no, perspectives. My question is, my question is whether wait, wait, let me come here. Should we not be looking at the truth of the sources, accuracy rather than the origin and ethnicity of it? If you are, no, it's like looking at Charles Sobrach's diary and saying, oh, I mean, he didn't... No, see, that, that, that no, is a cliché, that is a cliché, history is also written by the victims, uh, but, but they, they write, and some of them write in a different way of history. You choose to, I'm not saying you chose to ignore it, but if you don't look at it, or if it's not available to you, if, do you get a fair picture? Is, perhaps, this book, is, perhaps, this book... Can I, can I, what's your name? Can I, what's your name? Mr. Kavitri. Mr. Kavitri. Kavitri. Stand here. Look out of that window. You see something out. Look out of this window. You look out of this window. You get different views. Exactly. Like the four blind men and the so, elephant. So if these windows are closed, you don't get them. The so four blind men and the elephant. One man is feeling his correct. Right, sitting, correct. Sitting correct. Sitting so you, you can, when you write a book, you can only write with what is available. You can't make up these things. No, At least it's not so. I am saying about other no, sources. No, I have told, told you clearly. I have told you clearly. And the books that I refer to are in the bibliography. Yeah, that is why I have. So if you have got something new, no, I don't. I'm not a historian. No, no Mr. Pavitran, I'll tell you one thing. See, even when we talk about uh, pre-Portuguese history of Goa, I was looking through yes. Gerard Pereira the other day. The fact of the matter is that whether we like it or not, this might sound like a very politically incorrect thing to say, but we in Asia don't have a sense of history. I'm sorry to say that there is no documentation about the very little documentation about pre-Portuguese Goa. It's all conjecture. But, uh, you know, someone ruled there, so they must have ruled Goa. Someone yeah. ruled this empire, so it must have been here. Where are the facts? Where are the sources? So I'm saying that, see, it is our feeling that we have not, you know, we don't have a sense of history. I'm saying that I'm not willing to go by this nationalistic, uh, you know, foreign division of history. It has to be accurate otherwise. There is a bias, 
I'm not denying that there will not be a bias depending on who's keeping the records. What do you do in such a situation? Tell me. So we just go and create our own conjecture. Western sense of historiography. No, I'm saying there are various sources. I'm saying a historical method, a historical method would, I mean, fair enough to say there are no vernacular sources, but then you rely on oral sources. Because there is clearly an oral tradition in God which alludes to an inquisition which is very different. Oral sources have been created. Created. Look, look at the movie. There is a BBC movie called The Myth of the Spanish Inquisition. The full movie, it's 46 minutes, is there online. The oral sources have created myths in Europe also, which which Alan explains well why it came about. The you know the conflict between different sex sex and branches of Christianity there, and the, you know and Catholics. yeah Protestants yeah. and Catholics and the Dutch and the rivalry between the Dutch and the Portuguese and the Spaniards and who were their former rulers and all that. So in that sense, the myths you see the myths are so strong that when people come across a book like this. They have a problem to even make sense of it because it goes against all that we believe in. You know how many novels have been written on the Inquisition based on Priorka? There's a full genre of, Wait, of uh, novel writing in Kogni. I'm not going to go say that there is only Priorka who knows everything about Goa and nobody. There is this correspondence. Suppose I see an incident today and I write to Professor Ayadik. I say, see, see, this is what happens, you know, when they think. She writes back to me, you know, and there is a, yeah, there is a, con this, there is, it is also a, uh, there will be other sources. Uh, <laughs> so very thick source of information from some. There are so many. There were the bishops who were writing yeah. constantly to to the king. Those uh, yeah, and there were those uh, monks. Uh, there would be hundreds of monks. Now, who's going to do that work? Who's going uh, to no, do no, that no, work? No, no, My question is not who's good. I am saying that other than these well-known sources, there are other sources. There are other sources. Uh, and I can tell you there are not there are there are the sources. I don't like no, I, I am not a historian, but I read something my uncle had written about various, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, letters, uh, Lepoltu, yeah, the various letters written to the king and to their own houses, uh, uh, houses of, uh, what you call it, those mother houses, uh, 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 mother houses. You, you are aware they, of that? You have, uh, yeah, I'm aware so of that. they could be writing something. Now who will do that work? work? Who will do that work? The, the, the question is not who will do the work. I'm just saying that this is Priyorkar, Pisurlekar, whoever he is, is not the only source. Put out some No, I don't think it's fair that when there's one work, you say, no, no, what about that work? What about this you have not done? So that is what about Terry? No, but which which you open on TV? Putting it up for discussion. He's fair enough. He's Fair enough, but, but I'm saying, you see, yeah, there are other, in my opinion, there see, are other sources. You, you, no. Regarding the other sources, all okay, over okay. the world, okay. including Portugal and Spain, there are museums of, of inquisition. They do not depend on the resource, I mean, the sources, what you are telling. They don't believe this kind of, uh, 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 I mean, stories because they have their own way of collecting information. They display, I mean, even Portugal, you see, I mean, places like Lisbon, Portugal, they have got the Inquisition Museum. And these museums, they try to collect the private information. And there are people, at that time it was extremely dangerous to write down what is happening, but still there were some courageous people, they wrote it down in a manuscript because it will never be published because he himself will be burnt. So what happened is that some of them have survived. And since some of the Jews were also burnt, so Israel have collected some of the manuscripts, and these manuscripts are shown in the museums. It is unfortunately in Goa we don't have a museum, but all over the world, wherever there was an inquisition, there is a museum of inquisition. Whether it is Brazil, Mr. Shah, it is a Mr. Shah, but but one point I I only want to make. Uh, we need to clarify as historians uh, uh, that uh, it is uh, wrong to imagine that the Inquisition all over the world was a single Inquisition. No. And th therefore I think Alan's book is on the Goa Inquisition. The Goa Inquisition, eh, just because you have Spanish Inquisition and you have a Portuguese Inquisition and you have a Goa Inquisition, it does not mean that all these were identical. No, they were no. all managed in, in, a, in, in different ways and they all had different uh, political contexts, different social contexts and so Yes, what united them was that they were called Inquisition, but you cannot take facts of the Spanish Inquisition and think that that was identically replicated in Goa. No, Situations I, I, are very I, I different. I totally agree with you, but what happens is that even the, during the time, initially the targets were the, what they are called, uh, the Christian Nobu, 
were the converts from, uh, forcefully converted from Judaism and um, uh, Islam. But after that, the target became different. The target became witches. The target became Protestants. The, I mean, as the time changes, the target also changes. Goa may, there may not be, they may not be having enough number of Protestants, so it might not have taken place. But the, I mean, resources, what we have quoted, that is the least reliable resources because it is written by the inquisitors. It is themselves. the most reliable. Please understand that. Because let me tell you clearly. Don't 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 miss uh, miss report. In fact, they are see, more reliable. You, have, you are no authority to say that they are least reliable. They are the most reliable for one simple reason. They were secret secret documents. They were kept in the archives and not released. And the first releases are starting now. Okay. And if you have a look in at fact, these documents, a, you will see fact, the papers, you can uh, date them and all that sort of thing. So, you know, you have to take a proper approach. Even when you talk about oral resources, you have to question when that origin of that source takes place. Okay? How, how far, for instance, in my this uh, family history, my uncle wrote it in 1970, 70s, and he says, we, my, uh, our uh, family migrated from Aldona and we were Gaunkar from there. Uh, around the, this thing, we don't know why. Maybe it was because of war, or because of famine, or because of the Inquisition. So somebody can say, "Oh, Inquisition." Yes. Then it goes on. No, my uncle says that we don't know. Okay. And frankly, he didn't know. What the hell did we know about Inquisition there? Unless you refer to these original documents, they are not written for fiction. Many of them are written in multiple copies. Are there handwritten? Everything was done. They are from different ages and in different libraries. They match. Seven, 1745. There are about five different copies there. They've written different handwritings. So you cannot say they were doctored. Yes, it's very easy to say. But like Goebbels said, Goebbels is gone here, man. But Anybody can say. Lies said often enough becomes the truth. Correct. So no, so you could apply so, so both sides. Where, where is the lie? I am afraid there is only one truth. It, it, it is like. It is like it, it is like saying. No, 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 no. See, this guy, Ravindran, it can apply to both sides. It can apply to both sides. Now, for example, I am a student of literature. The amount of literature, fiction I have collected on the Inquisition is not funny. One sec. Is not funny. Konkani has gone to town on a Devnagari Konkani. It doesn't surface in Romi. You have to ask why. Then, even this Jewish attempt to claim victimhood, I'll tell you, Professor Fleur can, can correct me. The Jews were part of the Portuguese state at certain points in history. They may have had a, a, a dispute among, you know, like how you have a dispute in a marriage and they've had their own fights and all that. They were as big upholders as the Portuguese state as anyone else. Today in a post, post-colonial world, everyone wants to claim victimhood. Everyone wants to claim victimhood. And there are cases, there are cases, I'm not denying. Sorry? To claim authenticity, to write a historical treatise on the basis of number of copies, I mean, there are 500 copies of... Uh, no, he's talking about Bagan, accuracy, accuracy. Bagan, that doesn't mean... The issue of, of accuracy, no? Yeah, so it's that's... That, so that so is more... The fourth Muta in Inquisition, it is more... Five yeah, there copies there doesn't are, justify... What, 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 that's what I'm saying, no? That's what he's saying, no? Authenticity on the ground that there were five copies. I'm just calling that into question. Don't, don't misinterpret me. Don't misinterpret me, please. No, no. Be, keep I'm your talking, cool and just argue I'm, fully. I'm talking, I'm talking about what document is, is available. Correct. It's only... Let me complete, please. It's only based on that that you can come to certain things. I'm not saying they're 100% complete. No, there's more other sources available. Like she pointed out, and that is a fact, you can get other sources talking. Then for a proper historian, you've got to analyze this. Why somebody wrote like this? Why somebody else did like this? For instance, if you, if you uh, one of the viceroys say, blamed the Inquisition in the north for driving away artisans, but then I've analyzed it. Read that chapter there. And I create doubt on this. Now, uh, Braganza Kuna, the famous fighter. Christian, 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 Kuna, Christian, Kuna, Christian, Kuna. Christian. Uh, he, he says the Archbishop of Evora says it, something. On what basis? I've not been able to find that document. Doesn't mean it's not there. Okay. But he says that these inquisitors ravished women, put them in jail, and then burned them as heretics. I've analyzed from the documents. I found only 17 women were burned. I mean, few people write about the fact that they're ravished women, but okay. No, what I'm saying is, whom do you believe? 
let me let me ask you who do you believe no his point is different no, the women who were being arrested were who no, they were not young his women point was that women were being arrested who he not found any documentary so no 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 one sec he's not explained it very well read the friend. book if you read the no, book he, i'm going by what he said no no one sec one sec see we are just talking no, over you're going by what you understood in your way of what i said it's not it may not be the same thing please no if you can explain the point about please women because that is what, uh, what i'm trying to say is that Puna Rivera said this at a time when Goa was fighting for its independence, and he had a different motive. You got to analyze that motive, correct? He wanted to stir up the Goans to put out the other one. How true is that? We don't know, because my analysis of the documents that are there available. Did Puna Rivera had access to these documents? Did the Archbishop of Evora have uh, the access to these documents? No. Then how do you say this? But tomorrow, if you say no, Puna Rivera said it so on this page number, so it is truth. Then a different sort of uh, narrative develops. How you have to be very you, careful. How, Puna Rivera, how did you arrive at the situation where you discredit nothing for want of a better word? It's a very very simple thing. I told you just now. I have analyzed the auto defile list. I have analyzed the list. This will be available to you at some time. You count the number of women. Because it's an Excel sheet, you can easily say who, who was executed. Ages of the women you made the point. They yeah. were of certain. They, ages. Many of them, most of them were of uh, the deprived classes, Urumbis, Kolis, Sudras. Wait, wait, one second. That's a different thing. Many of them were middle-aged, yeah. which, which means uh, today, today, uh, uh, women have different sort of jobs. In those days, if you are a Kurumbi or a Koli, what was your work? You worked in the fields. How long? You had children at an early age. By the time you're 30, 35, uh, you look like an old woman. So the inquisitor is going after them, and he can get anything else. So, so that was a no, myth. Mr. Mr. Bashar, that, is that was a myth that created. Politically, I mean, that is a shameful thing to say. That I wouldn't go after a 35-year-old woman for that. No, no, no. But the point is this. No, See, it's a vulgar point to make. In the one sec. One sec. Yo, no. I. The I think I think you are distorting the, the point. Apart. No, no, that one sec. Point in isolation is see, you are distorting the point of what that is being is said. See, point. see a lot. See, you, a, are, you are don't understand. A lot. What I'm one saying. sec. One don't sec. One on sec. Me. One sec. A lot. A lot of these myths which we have in our mind have been created as such out of thin air. So how do you counter it? He is making an attempt to look at statistics, to look at figures, and to give you a rational this. I can show you literature. I can show you literature. I can show you what what the much cited uh, Delon and and Buchanan, particularly Buchanan, has written about the Hindu faith. Would you accept it? Would you accept it? Why doesn't Priyolkar accept it? No, no, I'm saying no. Priyolkar doesn't accept it. See, I'm saying it will be discussed. It will be discussed. But uh, there seems to be a lot of, I don't know, toning down of the Inquisition. Would you unequivocally condemn the Inquisition? No. How can you? Uh, that's, I don't. That, that's it depends started, how serious it is. No, it depends how, how your understanding no. of how serious because, it is. Uh, now we know that which was a very benign. Oh, only 177 people. No. Were, and no. Not even no. Have you have you condemned the burning of witches in Britain? Supposing I show you it was this it was 20 times. This is classic. Yeah. So so. So that's what I'm saying, no? So, so it depends on the seriousness and how you judge the seriousness of a particular well, issue. Do you, do you know how many people were executed in the U.S.? Uh, I've given the statistics. See, 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 see let's so not confuse issues. We are not good to talk I about neither, I neither, okay. uh, uh, What authority do you have to condemn anybody? No. I have a moral obligation. No. Do you condemn the Supreme Court for hanging some people? There is, the trials are not in the... In no, the, do you? In camera, there do is a certain judicial process. People have heard. That is exactly uh, what I'm saying. Read the, read the, the chapter. Come and say there is, there is a, okay, now that you have understood no, this, that is what the case. That is exactly what the Inquisition had in the regiment told. None of the people convicted here had any due process. The trials were in held, how, how do you held behind closed doors. Who said in camera? The trials were held behind closed doors. Is that a fair trial? No, which 21st I century standards? By 21st I century standards? No. Let, let me just say one thing. Yeah. Professor Fleur, Professor Fleur wants to make a point. Both of us have a point. Both of us have uh, students of history, and we were trained in, in that fashion. I don't think that there is any case where you can say that the Inquisition is 
can claim to be saying that they have the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. No, no, now they are okay, now you are already, you are already, you are already making a judgment by saying that the book is toning down. Now, that's so, not that's that's that. Listen, 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 let her finish. Let her finish, let her finish. You are already interpreting. Okay? Yeah. You are already interpreting, like, you know, you use, you use the word euphemism. I said, yeah, yeah, I stand by. Correct. So you stand by what it is. But what we are trying to say is that here are a list of facts that perhaps when you have never considered before. Number one. Okay? Then you bring out, oh, were there, uh, have you recorded any uh, local uh, source or so? Sometimes you were not. Let me tell you that in the Sashtriti Bhakar, which is a Marathi source, it's a bakhat, but it's a Marathi. And, and, and now that is going by wait, wait. what you said. Wait, that wait. is a local source. Let her finish, let her finish. Let, let. He says very clearly, he says that the Shinvis and the two Avanis and this mm -hmm. one more caste that I have to identify were not touched. The proud Bakhare was to the Okay? He's making a very, very strong paragraph. Why were the Vani's not, why were the Vani's, why were the Vani's and the Shaymi's not under, there is a definite reason for that. Okay. Which is that we were important to the commercial interests of the colonial state. Yeah? So, there can be many interpretations of all these facts. Yeah? You can have a local source, you can have the official source. What he has done, I'm not defending, I haven't read the whole book. In fact, I have jotted down for the three or four pages that I've read, Mr. Machada has jotted down some questions that I would like to ask, ask you. But honestly, a lot of this research has never been done before. Yeah. So you have to wait. So you have to wait without just condemning it as a euphemism or something like that. You have to wait. No, bad boy is definitely anything. No, but uh, I, I, I want to make okay, 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 and bring those facts out for whatever research that historian has. If one historian is expected to do all the research, there will be only one PhD in the entire world. That is not so. There are various sources. Alan has accessed certain sources that have never been accessed before. There may be still other sources. And let other historians come up and deal with those sources. But whatever sources have been accessed, there is a lot of original accessing in this book which I have gone through, and that is put forward now for a point of view. But it's certainly extremely unfair, as uh, Mr. Bavitran says, are you condemning it or are... There is not, it is not the job of any historian to condemn or to praise. That is the job of the novelist. I, I, I started with that statement. Now don't interrupt yeah. everyone, one at a time. Otherwise, I'll become I, I, I Anand Goswami. I'll try to become Anand Goswami. I don't have the voice. Do you know? This is a discussion. Nobody is thinking anything against Mr. Bhattacharya. No, but a discussion on that book actually. Whatever, no? On that book. We are here for that. Otherwise, yeah. we would have said, what a wonderful marriage. You so, wouldn't talk no, anything. No, no, no. But I'll just say, a, a, a historian that begins it with does, condemning no, or praising, I would go suspect. Anything goes beyond sometimes. I, I, I started okay. with it. If you all want, we can wait till midnight. If you all want to finish fast, yeah. we finish Please fast and decide how to spend the time. I don't mind. Any last questions, any questions? Oh, yeah. Please, please. Now, please. Uh, I mean, we have started with the premise that these inquisitions were started to meet out what is Roman justice. But if you see the public opinion, if you see the uh, these things, I suggest that you read the, uh, the uh, I mean, article called I mean, it's a part of the uh, Brother Kamar uh, Kamarism by Dostoevsky, where the inquisitors are. Uh, I mean, I mean, judging Jesus Christ is right. Jesus Christ has come down, and then he has made naked, and he was wearing a sackcloth, and then he is condemned uh, to be uh, to be burnt into fire because Jesus Christ has created problem with the priests. 
so what happens is that after that jesus uh, after that uh, jesus christ uh, i mean he doesn't utter a single word he has been condemned he has to be burned next day uh, along with other heretics then jesus christ just kisses him kisses the cardinal and then leaves then ultimately cardinal cardinal say you get out from there because he was so surprised that jesus christ will after all these things he will still pardon him so yeah i suggest that you read this one this book is a quite big Mr. one Shah, but that, uh, that that is a novel lost of no that is not a novel but that is a the novel. public please, perception please. of what is what was justice of the system the, i think you you are confusing novels and uh, fact and fiction that is why i put fact fiction and factoids no no okay. no, 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 no. So, Okay. Yeah, yeah. If if there's nothing else, I mean there will be other things. But for today, for today we'll stop the discussion. If you don't mind, and if you don't feel that I've been uh, too amended, anyone wants to say some last words? She's saying no. I think people have to reach home. The books are available for sale there, in case you all want it. Uh, we sorry don't have any eats for sale, but there is a bar uh, which has also soft drinks. If you want to have it, you can contact Jason. And for the books, Khalil is there. That's it. The exhibition continues for another three more days. Tomorrow we have uh, Radha Rao talking about his novel. The day after tomorrow it's a poetry event, and the day after that it's some local books on Sali Gaon. Th thank you all for your patience and thank you. Thanks. The book is available for signed copies if anyone wants. My distance.